Hello, my name is Michael and welcome to Learn Coding Tutorials. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use Yeoman and Grunt to deploy an app to Heroku properly according to best practice. In short, here's what we're going to accomplish by the end of this tutorial. First, we're going to use Node.js to install Yeoman, which is an amazing tool that will make us a lot more efficient and save us a ton of time when we build projects. Next, we're going to use Grunt to perform a variety of tasks, including live reload as we work on our app, build to concatenate and minify our JavaScript and CSS files, as well as create a dist folder for deployment, and build control to deploy our dist folder to Heroku. And finally, we'll open up our deployed app in our browser. At this point, we'll have laid the foundation to start building any app with amazing efficiency. Before we begin, I just want to say that I just started using a Mac, and when I used Windows, I couldn't get Yeoman installed because there was always some error that happened. Maybe it works now, but for whatever reason, I had a lot of problems with Windows that I just don't seem to have with a Mac. So if you're on Windows and this tutorial doesn't work for you, sorry. Maybe you can try to git clone the Yeoman generator repo directly and then do npm install and bower install. Okay, so let's get started now. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that Node is installed on our computer. We can do that from uh, nodejs.org. So you can just click on install here and it'll automatically install it for your specific operating system. So after you install Node, you can test that it's working by just typing in node-v, npm-v, and that'll tell you what version of each you have. So now what we want to do is we want to um, install Yeoman on our computer. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to type npm install g, that'll install it globally so that we can use it from any folder we want. And we're just going to type in yo right there. And then we're going to wait for it to install. It might take a little while, so I might just skip ahead in this video. So just kind of be patient for it. Um, I couldn't get yo to install on Windows. So um, if you're using Windows and you can get it to install, great. If not, um, you know, try it on a Mac. It seems to work better on Mac for whatever reason. Okay, so now, next what we want to do is we want to install um, one of the generators for Yeoman. So we can type in npm install g, and the generator that we're going to use for this project is going to be just the generator web app, which is kind of their default standard generator. So let's type that in and install that. And again, we're just going to wait for it to install. I'll probably skip ahead soon. All right, next what we want to do is we want to go to the folder that we want to create this project in. And I'm just going to make it in, um, I have a code slash misc folder that I use for projects. I'm just going to make a directory. Um, you can just make it manually if you want. I like using the command line, so I'm going to do make dir um, we'll do we'll call it yeoman grunt deployment tutorial. I know that's a long name, but it's nice and descriptive, um, so that might help. And you see that it's down there. And I have kind of a fancy little file display thing. You could use ls if you wanted to. Um, so now I'm going to go into the folder. So cd yeoman grunt deployment tutorial. Wow, that's a long name. Now, to set up the Yeoman generator, we're just going to type in yo. I'm just going to type in, well, let's just type in yo. I could type in yo web app, but um, I just want to show you typing in yo right here. Now we can choose one of these generators. I have a few of them here. Um, so just select web app here. You should only have one if you just um, installed it. Press enter. And now this is going to give you some options. We could have it work with SAS and Modernizer. I'm just going to do bootstrap here. Press enter there. And then wait for it to um, set up everything for you. And once it does that, we're going to take a look around a little bit, play with it a little bit. And then I'll show you how to actually uh, deploy your app using best practices so that you deploy only the dist folder and not every single folder in uh, this directory. OK, so now the Yeoman Generator web app is installed in our folder. And before we take a look around, I'm just going to kind of show you um, 
the magic that's at work here by just typing in grunt serve. And that's all we need to do to launch our app. So I'm going to press enter here. That's going to launch immediately in our browser on localhost 9000. And you can see there's already a nice uh, layout and app already prepared for us here. And I'm going to pull this over to the left here. Now, before we play around with it, um, let's just kind of look around the folder. I'm going to create a new tab in my terminal. This is running. It's just waiting for changes. And so um, I'm not going to mess with that. So let's open up a new uh, tab there. And let's take a look around in this folder. Well, I'm not in the folder yet. I'm going to go to, um, I need to navigate back into the folder. So we're going to type in CD Yeoman Grunt uh, Yeoman Grunt Deployment Tutorial. And so you'll see a few folders here and files. Let's, uh, there's a Grunt file here. Um, let's start by going to the um, app folder though. And you'll see this kind of the center of our um, app here. We'll see an index.html file here, which is basically our main layout, a scripts folder, and a styles folder. So this is where our JavaScript goes. This is where our CSS goes. So now let's actually test out the live reload to see how that works. Um, I'm going to open each of these files in Sublime Text. I'm using um, a fancy bash profile shortcut. You can just open up in your folder. Just double click on the file if you want. Um, but this is just kind of my fancy way of doing that. And let's open up the other ones too. So sub, uh, let's go into, let's open up one of the C, um, the JS files. So um, open that one up. And let's put that into the same folder here. Let's do the same thing with the CSS file. And that's another shortcut there. So you can do it the old fashioned caveman way if you want. Um, so let's open that up and I'm going to put this all in the same place. So now let's play around with the live reload. You'll notice um, here, it says waiting here. That means that it's waiting for changes to our files. And so look what happens if I just change my files and then save these changes. So if I just change this to, let's change the, uh, let's change the button to say uh, success. And then I'm just going to save it, and you'll see automatically it changes to success right there. And then if I changed, um, let's change allo allo to hello, hello, because I speak English. So that changes automatically, and Live Reload is amazing. We can do the same thing with our CSS and JS files. So let's, um, just to be kind of weird, Let's change the background to orange and save it, and it'll automatically turn orange right there. And that is amazing. It saves so much time and is so efficient. Now let's try one more thing with the JS file. Um, I'm going to open up Dev Consoles here. You can see that when it loads, it first um, console logs, allo, allo. So once again, let's just change this to hello, hello. And once I save it, you'll notice that it changes down here. And there we go. And so Live Reload is amazing. And so now let's, uh, now that we know how, kind of how, so now that we kind of know how Live Reload works, let's take um, a further look around in this um, folder and just the magic of Yeoman. So let's take a look at the grunt file first, just to kind of see what's in here. So um, I'm going to open up gruntfile.js. Again, you can use this. Again, you can open this up using, um, you know, the folder and double clicking, but um, I'm just going to do it this way. So let's maximize this. This, there's a, this is kind of where a bunch of stuff is going on. Um, so this, this is the init config. And so this is the watch. This is what sets up the live reload. And what the watch is going to do is it's going to look for changes to um, our styles folder, our JS folder, um, and it's going, this is the live reload code, which is what um, gives you that automatic refresh when you save your changes. Connect connects you to the local host server. And then we have a bunch of stuff here. 
Uh, we don't need to know what all of them do. The JS hint is what kind of uh, tests your JS to make sure that it's proper um, syntactically. And then we have a bunch of stuff here. I don't even know what all of these do, but um, it's a lot of good stuff and a lot of magic. Um, so these are the tasks that are um, run. So when you press grunt serve, it does um, these things right here. Oh yeah, when you run grunt serve, it runs these things right here. And then um, grunt server has been deprecated, so we don't use that anymore. Uh, grunt test runs our tests. Um, and then grunt build is another one that we're going to be using today. And that's going to basically uh, set up our distribution or dist folder. It's going to concatenate and minify our JS and CSS files. And then grunt default is going to do a bunch of stuff too. Um, so now let's check out some more in this folder. So now what we want to do is we want to learn how to push our app to both GitHub and Heroku. And so to do that, we're going to first um, make sure we have a GitHub account. And so I'm going to open up GitHub right here. Um, I'll show you my account right here. So let's click on repositories. Let's make a new repository. I'm going to maximize this actually. We're going to call this repository. I'm going to call this repository um, Yeoman, the same thing. Yeoman Grunt Deployment Tutorial. Uh, just to make it nice and descriptive, I'm going to create repository. And I'm going to leave this here for now. The tool that we're going to use to push our app to GitHub and Heroku is actually called Grunt Build Control. And it looks like this. And so we're going to go to this documentation site. And it says here to install it, we're going to do um, Grunt or npm install Grunt Build Control Save Dev. So we're going to do that right here, actually. We're going to save this into our folder. Um, so we're going to do npm install grunt build control we're going to do dash dash save dash dev which is going to automatically save it into our um, package.json file so let's do that and we'll wait for that to install so now if we go into our package.json file we'll notice that the grunt build control is automatically um, saved in there which is convenient so now what we want to do is we want to add grunt build control to our grunt file so if we scroll down here we'll see these this configuration file right here uh, so what we want to do is we want to copy paste this code into our uh, sublime text or into our grunt file so here we have our grunt file and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to scroll to the top here and I'm just going to put this package equals require package.json um, Jason, however you pronounce it. Um, I'm going to put that into the top here like uh, I'll just put it up here like that. Ooh, that's wrong one. I think I pressed the wrong one. Control C, Control V. There we go. And now I'm going to take this bottom part here and let's copy paste that. And let's stop right there. Copy paste. Copy. Scroll. I'm just going to put it at the bottom here. Um, let's right, right, put it right above the register tasks here. So I'm going to put a comma here. That comma is important. And let's just paste that in there. So you'll see here. Um, Build control, that's going to be the command that we use. It's going to push the dist folder, which we haven't created yet, which we'll do soon. There's two things that we want to push it to. Pages, which is the uh, GH pages branch of our GitHub repository, and Heroku, which is going to be um, something that can run our Node app. And so first, we want to replace this right here with our GitHub repository that we just created. So let's go back here. and. I'm going to uh, basically, let's first go to the uh, SSH thing here and let's copy this 
this part of the link into our um, into this place right here into our build control code let's paste that that's going to set things up to push um, our app to the GH pages branch of our repository and then now we want to fill in um, this Heroku part. If you don't have Heroku yet, you can go to heroku.com and download the tool belt. Um, a better way to do it might be to go to um, Heroku Node Tutorial and then just go to uh, Setup and then you can click Download Heroku Tool Belt for Mac OS X or it'll be for whatever operating system you have. Um, so once you get that set up, um, you would have to create um, a Heroku account by doing sign up. And then you would do Heroku login. And I'm already logged in, but let me just do that again. So chain that C, and then that's my type in your password. That's my password right there. It'll say authentication successful. There might be an error message that shows up later that says that you don't have permission to um, push to Heroku. To solve that problem, you might need to do um, Heroku add keys, I believe. Um, if that doesn't work, I'll add an update to this page. But you would do Heroku add keys. Um, you also need to set up GitHub as well. And that'll ask you for a, um, some sort of key. Well, actually, let me do that right now. Heroku add keys. Keys add. There we go. So if you um, need to add a key for permission's sake, uh, you do Heroku keys colon add, and then it'll say find an SSH public key at that. Would you like to upload it to Heroku? I'm going to press Y right there. Um, to get that SSH key, you can, uh, to learn how to do all that stuff with the SSH key, um, you can go to um, set up GitHub. And this will teach you how to do all of that stuff. So you do all this to set up your GitHub account. And then, um, yeah, and then there's a generate SSH key tutorial here. Just follow these instructions to get that all set up. And so now what we want to do is uh, we want to create our dist folder so that we can start pushing these things to uh, GitHub and Heroku. Before we do that, though, we need to um, add and commit everything. So if we type in git status, by the way, we need to download git also. If you don't know how to do that, just um, just you know, download git and get git from here. And then once you do that, you can run git commands from your terminal. Um, so I'm going to do git status. So you see, um, oh, before we do that, I need to do git init, which is going to initialize this as a git repository. And now I can do git status. And those things need to be um, added and committed. Before we do that, we need to add GitHub as a remote repository. So I'm going to go back to the HTTPS here, copy this. And so I'm going to type in git remote add origin. This is going to add this um, remote repository to this directory. Directory, And so that'll do that. So now um, I want to do git add. And this dot's just going to include everything except for the folders and files that are listed off in the git ignore file, which is important for leaving out things we don't want to commit. And so now if I do git status, I'll see that everything has been added, but not yet committed. So let's commit it out. So I'm going to do git commit dash m. I'll just say initial commit. And so that looks like that. And now I'm going to do git. I'm going to push this now to my remote repository. So git push um, origin master. That's what I want to push up there, and this is my username. Uh, you can find this code at my repository if you want. Type in my password. And now, if I refresh 
this page, um, I will see uh, my new folder here. But this is not actually what we want to deploy because um, our app folder has a bunch of non-concatenated and non-minified files in them. So our goal is to um, create a um, distribution copy of our app. So to do that, we're going to first create our dist folder by running grunt build. And it's important to commit everything before we run this because otherwise it'll um, ask you to update everything before you build. So grunt build is going to automatically concatenate and minify all of our JS and CSS files, which is um, really convenient, saves us a lot of time. So we'll run that. And then I'll show you the folder that it creates all of this stuff in. So it's doing a lot of cool things here that will save us a lot of time So because we won't need to do them ourselves. So now if we go to our um, folder, we'll see a new dist folder here. So let's go into that folder, cd dist. And if we go into, um, let's go into um, our styles folder, and you'll see that our CSS files have these weird you know, numbers before them, which are basically the concatenated and minified versions of our files. So um, Grunt does that all for us. And if we go to our index.html file, uh, we'll see that it automatically changes our style sheet to contain these, uh, to have these numbers before them. So it'll automatically update our um, links to our um, CSS and scripts files. You'll see the scripts here is going to be this number as well. So we don't need to change that ourselves, which is great. And you'll see that everything's minified, which means that it's um, optimized for speed. And so now, um, before we do anything else, let's just practice pushing this to GitHub. To push this to GitHub, let's just go back to our root folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, let's just check this really quickly, git status. OK, so you see that there's nothing to commit, even though we just created a dist file, which is a change. And that's because our git ignore file um, includes command to in ignore the dist file because that's just basically repeats of our local folder but our um, git our grunt build control is actually going to push that dist folder and just that dist folder to um, github and heroku and it's going to specifically push it to the gh pages branch so, so i'm going to type in grunt build control um, and the command we saw earlier right here was pages so i'm going to type in colon pages and that will automatically push our dist folder to the pages branch of our github repository so now if i refresh this page um, i'll see that there's a new branch called gh pages and this just includes our dist folder here which is optimized for um, speed so you'll see that my main js is nice and minified here which saves a lot of space and if we want to view this app now on GitHub, we can just go to, um, I can go to my username, so michaelchang429.github.io. This is where it loads the GH pages branches of our repositories. And I can go to um, yeoman, grunt, deployment, tutorial. And our page will be up on the web for everyone to see. So we can share this link with our friends and potential employers if we wanted to. And so now what we want to do is we want to learn how to um, push this up to Heroku, which takes a few extra steps. Um, so let me just kind of show you what happens if we try to push this directly to Heroku right now. If I do grunt build control Heroku, we're going to get an error because Heroku is looking for a node app and this is not yet a node app. You'll see um, we haven't done Heroku create yet. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, we haven't done Heroku create yet. So I need to create um, a remote repository. And so you'll see that my remote repository is called Radiant Citadel 6404.git. And I'm going to put this into my uh, grunt file. So let's put this in here, right there. 
just like we did with the GitHub repository. We'll save that. And now let's try pushing. And again, it's not going to work because it's not yet a node app. And I'll show you, yeah. Well, uncommitted changes. So again, we need to um, add and commit everything before we do all of that. And we're just gonna do something simple. Made, uh, we'll just say updated grunt file.js because that's what we did. Uh, and then let's now try that. Grunt build control. Heroku. So we're just kind of playing around and trying to keep doing stuff until it works. So yeah, you see here, no Cedar supported app detected. What that basically means is it's looking for a node app and it's not finding one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our dist folder and we wanna turn this into a node app or node, node folder. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a package dot json which is going to um, tell Heroku what to install um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first copy so you'll see in our root folder we already have a package.json file here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up I'm, just, I'm going to copy everything I'm going to end up deleting most of it but um, I do want that bottom part with the node um, engine so now I'm going to go back into um, the dist folder and I'm going to open up the package.json file that I just created which will be empty. I'm going to paste this. I'm actually going to delete everything except for this engines node part at the bottom. So all these dev dependencies we don't need. Let's delete that. And I need to change this to change this to um, 0 0.12 because um, Heroku doesn't like that greater than sign there and uh, 0.110 is not legitimate. So I'm going to save that. And that's all we need here for now. But let's pull this over to the left so you can see what happens when I install Express. So now what I want to do is I want to turn this into a Node Express um, folder. So I'm going to do npm install express. I'm going to dash dash, press dash dash save here to um, automatically save it to my package.json file. And you'll see once I do that, um, that'll automatically load into here. So you see Express is loaded up here. What I want to do now is I want to create a um, server.js file because I don't have that yet. So let's do touch. You can just you know create it manually if you want. Um, but I'm doing it fancily with my shortcuts here. And so you'll see that there's a new server.js file here. And I'm gonna do I'm gonna open up this folder. And I'm just gonna create a very, very basic node server. Um, so let's do var express equals require express. This is the most basic um, server you can get. var app equals express. And we're going to do app.use. This is going to tell um, node or express where our static files are, which is my index.html file and my scripts and JS files. Um, and CSS files and that's just going to be in the root directory so that'll just be their name there and don't worry about if you don't know what that does exactly um, but just type that in for now and we're gonna um, var port is going to be the process dot in dot port uh, or 3000 if there is no um, so basically this is for Heroku and this is for um, local and so um, let's now do app dot listen Port. And then we're going to do console.log listening on, uh, and then we'll type port there. And before we upload this to Heroku um, or try to do that, let's first test this out. Let's type in um, node server. It says listening on 3000. Let's just test it out to make sure that it's working. Um, so let's make a new tab. Let's type in localhost and mine is on 3000. And you'll see that it's working on the localhost. So now let's try it on Heroku. But before we do that, um, Heroku requires a proc file. So you'll see that there's no proc file here yet. 
So I'm going to create a proc file and uh, yeah, so I'm going to again use my shortcut. That's just called proc file. There's no dots or anything. And I'm going to go into my proc file. And all we need in this proc file is web colon node server.js. This just tells node where to start or run our app from. And for us, it's our server.js file. So now we should be ready to upload this to Heroku. Before we do that, um, let's just, I think, have we made any changes? Well, let's just save everything just in case. Um, so let's go back to our root folder. Um, uh, nothing to commit. So I guess we're ready to push it then. Let's um, go to grunt, build control. Let's just type in Heroku. And if there's any errors, we'll deal with it as it comes. So let's just see what happens here. Let's hope this works. All right, build succeeded. That seems good. All right, so now let's try to open up our app at our URL here. Mine is at um, Radiant Citadel. Let's just paste that in here. And it works. Our app is uploaded to Heroku. So that is how we use Yeoman and Grunt to create an app and then to upload it to GitHub pages as well as to Heroku. And these uploads are actually optimized for the web. Our files are all concatenated and minified, which is best practice and will help um, give our users a faster experience with our app. So hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, feel free to subscribe and comment and ask questions. And thanks for watching, and I hope to uh, make more videos soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.